Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shrini here and today we are going to look about an important topic which is very much important in context of Selenium that is how to use collections in Selenium. So we have often heard about the term collections in Java. So how are that we are going to use it to most of its effect and make it so essential whenever we require in different situations so that we are going to learn in today's session. So this is my channel, Selenium Automation and Java Learning with Shini. So if you are new to this channel, I will strongly recommend you to go ahead and subscribe to it and just hit the bell icon to get notifications. So here I'll be taking free videos on Java, Selenium, API, Python. So you'll be getting a lot of interview questions as well. So do subscribe it for sure. So let's get on to today's topic. So today's topic is on collections in Java and basically uh, I'll be showing you the practical part in this session like in big different situations do we need to use collections in Java for Selenium and what is the syntax how do we store the data how do we retrieve the data so all of that we are going to see in today's session so this is a very important session guys so do not miss this particular session just watch it till the end because you are going to get a lot of interview questions on collections especially for maybe a core Java interview or a Selenium interview. So do not skip any part of it. I would advise you to watch it till the end. It may take a bit long because uh, there are three to four different types of collections we are going to use for Selenium. So just watch it till the end. So let's get on to the practical part. So I've written a code here so that it will be easy for me to explain to you all and how is that different situations we'll be requiring to use this particular collections in Selenium. So let's get started. So we have already seen over the basics of Selenium in our previous sessions. So if you haven't gone over the Selenium basic sessions, I would ask you to just go over my Selenium tutorials playlist. There are a lot of sessions for the Selenium web driver basics and how to get started. And if you are very new to Java, just go over the Java tutorials playlist and then come back to this session. And I have created one more video on collections overview. So that will give you an insight about what are collections in Java. So let's get started. So I've created a global web driver variable here, right? And I'm having a method called setup. So I'm going to use a normal way through main method. I'm going to explain you this particular tutorial session. And in the next session, I'll be introducing one more concept in Selenium that is test ng. So before we jump on to test ng, I just wanted to show you all how are we going to use collections in Selenium through the usage of main method, of course. So the first thing is that we are going to have a method called setup method, right? I'm going to pass an application, whatever I'm going to launch. So we have seen all of this in our previous sessions that we have to first set the system property. If you're using a Chrome driver, if you're using a Firefox driver and you're having a Firefox driver, which is less than three version, that is if you're having a Selenium version less than three, and if you have a Firefox driver compatible with it, then you need not do the system not set property. You can directly launch the Firefox. So you can just, instead of this, you can say Firefox driver. That will be the only difference. Instead of Chrome driver, it will be new Firefox driver, right? So you have to launch the application. So for that, we're using the get method. Now we are setting some important parameters here for the entire application session that is maximizing the window and we are setting the timeouts for implicit weight and the page load timeout. That is for this particular example, just for the demo purpose, I've mentioned here that maximum of 10 seconds implicit weight will be the implicit weight timeout. After that, it will timeout and it will give you element not found exception in case it could not find any element within this 10 second span of time, right? And similarly for page to be loaded completely, it will wait for a maximum of 20 seconds and then it will get timed out. So that is the usage of this setup method. It will just set up the application whenever we need to launch it and what is the maximum time we would want it to wait. Now let's look at three particular collections we are going to see in this session, right? So we are going to see array list, we are going to see set and we are going to see hash map. So these are the three different collections we very frequently use in Selenium and you will be getting a lot of interview questions on this because this is what we use in very common day to day practice when we use Selenium automation. So I'll be showing you all three applications here and how are we going to use it. So let's look at the applications which we are going to look at. So I'm going to take three different websites for example. One is this 
money ready website which has lot of stocks here and you can just inspect the element and you can find out it's uh, you know the relative elements like the preceding or the following elements whichever i've covered in my xpath access so if you haven't gone over the xpath access video i will strongly recommend to go over that because i'll be using such a kind of xpath here which is formed using the xpath access methods that is parent and ancestor so i'll drop a link for the same in this my video you can look at that then we will look at one more website that is nokri.com which is a very common website and if you see here it is having three pop up window genpack cognizant and zorient as the pop up windows when this particular window gets launched and we are having one more window selenium easy demo for the demo website it's having lot of different elements which you can use to practice you can do normal practice for selenium using this website so let's go one by one so let's go into the main method so in the main method i'm using these three different applications here i have mentioned it in these three variables so first we are going to look at an example of setup application so we are going to set up or launch this particular money ready application and we are going to look at this method first so if you look at this element list usage method we are passing the x path so we are going to pass the x path so this is a website right so i'm having a element here called chambal fertils right this is the stock chambal fertils so what am i going to do here i am just i'm just trying to find out what are the rows which are present before this particular element so i found out from this chambal fertils its current row so if you look at here i'm finding its parent td tag i'm going to the ancestor tag right and then once i've reached to this particular row that is chambal fertilis row which i'm highlighting now i'm just trying to find out what are the rows preceding to it and at the same level so at the same level means these are like the sibling for this chambal fertilis but they are preceding to chambal fertilis so it is one person the average and divan housing so i am basically getting those rows here as highlighted in this session and i'm storing this into a list see this is more than one value so whenever we are having a particular output which is giving more than one value we have to store it in some collection and since it is returning more than one we have to store it in some list so i'm creating a list here if you look at this i'm having this x path it is returning more than one element here the element is representing a row so it's a row of individual tds so that is why i'm saying driver dot find elements not find element it is find elements because this is returning more than one row so i am going to store it in such a collection it's a list of web elements just pay attention to this guys so this is a list of web element it is not a list of string or some other syntax it is a list of web element because what you're getting here as the output are two rows each row would be considered as a element or you could say a list of elements because these are list of 1 2 3 4 5 cells right that represents one row in this particular table so here we are having a list of uh five different elements stored as a row right so we are having two elements as such returned here if you see the count here too and they are stored in a list of web element now what do we need to do we have to first iterate over the list because we have to first iterate over the list so that we can reach to the individual cell like d1 housing then group a then 75.30 79.65 and 5.78 we have to reach to each and every this cell that is td and get the value of that using the get text method so what we are going to do here we are going to use a iterator method so how to do that just use this list and if you do dot operator you are going to get such a kind of different methods which are available for the collection so i'll be again creating a video separately for array list set hash map in detail but just to show you all that whenever you use a list or any particular collection type if you use a dot operator you will get a lot of methods which are there within it so i'm just going to use dot iterator method right so if you just do a mouse over on iterator you will see it returns a iterator of web element so we are going to store it in a iterator web element you have created a variable called itr right because it is going to iterate over web elements again the reason is because this is a row of different elements this is a element this is a element all of these individual cells also are a element 
so we have to again iterate it over the web element right so once we have done this now we are going to use a iterator right so for iterating what we have is if you see here again if i do a dot operator it is having these different methods so i have to use it in a kind of a loop so that it tries to go over each and every row finds out each and every cell and then prints the value so i'm going to use itr dot has next so this particular iterator is going to iterate over each and every cell 1 2 3 4 and 5 and in the process of doing that it is going to store the individual so when we say itr dot next if you do a mouse over it is going to return your element so i'm going to store each and every cell element as it comes into a web element and just going to get the get text and store it in a value variable so i'm going to print it here and what i am going to do here just don't think about it for now because this is another concept of hash map it's another connection so we will not go into this for now so just understand we are going to use a list right here right so we have created a list and in this particular example i am just storing it in a list and have created a variable here and i am just trying to iterate over the list here so it's a simple list collection of used here i'm going to use a iterator method and i'm just going to store it into a iterator of web element variable because as i told you it is returning a iterator web element this iterator method is returning a iterator web element right so iterate over these elements there is a there are methods within this iterator method so once we go into this iterator class it has got different methods so i've created a variable or a object of iterator class and in this one if you see here an iterator over a collection it it just allows the caller to remove the elements or just iterate it over the elements so if i do itr dot next has next it will do a check that until it has got some element it will keep on iterating and if you do itr dot next it is going to return the next element so that is the purpose of itr dot next of course we are going to get the text text means this d1 housing a 75.30 these values we have to get so that is why that is something but this is td so that is why this is going to give get text or value of td because we have got that as the element here and this is going to give me the get text or value of td and we are going to print it here and these two will skip it for the time being so for the moment let me just comment it out because you will get confused so i don't want you to get confused right now just keep it simple and let's just run this particular application for now see i have commented out the other two parts so i'm just going to run this and let me let me show you what is the output so it's launching the application maximize it and here let's look at what happens so it's going to get the stock values and it has closed the window because we have used quit driver here so quit driver i have created a method it is just going to do driver dot quit so that is the usage of it so right so let's look at the output so this were the windows which we had already opened for our demo purpose so these are not the windows which were through automation it was just launched manually so let's look at the output yeah here we go so it has gone over the individual elements if you see here element get text so this is what we have let me show you this is what we have mentioned here in our list usage element get text right and we have printed the value here so it has printed the value of all the rows which were preceding which element chumble fortalis so let's look at the current application so now it's showing only two because this was the previous window let's refresh it yeah here we go so above chambal fortalis now you are having three rows prestige estate estates pro the one housing and one percent beverage so these are the three rows which are being printed out here one by one element by element so this is how we use the list to its advantage in selenium we can use it to store the values and then we can use the methods which are there within the iterator class to iterate over the elements within the collection so hope this particular portion is clear this was the first of the usage in selenium that we use a list interface and we can use a array list class as well if you require to 
otherwise we can just store it in a list and then iterate over the list methods as we have done here remember we have not created any object of the list here because you cannot create the object of list because list is an interface if you have to create the object you have to store it in a just you have to do equal to new array list so what i mean to say if in case we were to store it as an array list right i'm just showing as an example let's say it's called element 1 then you have to say new array list of web element this is how you instantiate a list currently for the time being i did not want to do that because it is directly allowing me to go ahead because i'm using driver.find elements but if you want to instantiate a list this is how you do it you cannot say new list because this is not a method if i just were to do this see it's going to give me error see cannot instantiate the type list because list is a interface it's not a class because i don't need it now i'm just commenting it out so this is the first usage in selenium using a list right now i'm going to go for the second part okay so the second part is a drop down so i'm going to go for a drop down and i'll be showing you that here i had basically a case that it was just like a scenario of different web elements which are like in terms of rows what if if you have a drop down then what are we going to do in that scenario so for now i'm just going to comment the set part set is the last part we are going to see right so i'm going to comment this for now so let's go for the second part now so second part here so i'm going to comment out this portion as well because we've already seen the usage of list right now we're going to look at the drop down list now let's say we are having a application which is having a drop down so let me show you that so we have gone over this first part second part is that let's say we have this website selenium easy demo we have this drop down select a day and it is having these all values so let what if if we want to store or what if we want to retrieve the values of this drop down from sunday monday tuesday all of these values if you want to just retrieve it we can store these values in a list and then we can retrieve it as well so that is what my second example is going to show you here using this drop down list method so let's go to this method so here again like the previous example there is no difference in syntax at all it's just a different usage i wanted to depict here in selenium we have got the xpath passed to this method so if you look at this one xpath list this we've already seen so xpath drop down list here we are passing this particular xpath what is this xpath if you just to inspect here it's going to give you id select demo if i do a mouse over it is highlighting this drop down right so i'm forming the xpath here right it's highlighting the drop down so this particular xpath is what i'm passing to my method drop down list right i'm passing that xpath here i'm finding the elements again the same usage i'm finding the elements through that method which is xpath method passing the xpath value storing it again in a list of web element and using the iterator to iterate it over the elements i've stored it so i've got through this uh, drop down list dot iterator because this is the method we are using in collections for the list interface so once we do that we store the values in a iterator of web element so i'm creating a variable of or object of iterator web element and then iterating it over that using this whatever way we have explained in the last method itr dot has next and then get the individual value right and then individual element let's say so that we understand this concept and this is going to get the individual value of each element and then just print it out so this is a simple usage of how we are going to use it for getting the list of values in a drop down that is what we can use it for so let's run this method now it's launching it so that is it so it has completed and now you can see that we have got the different values printed down 
whatever these drop down had please select sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday it has got all of them printed down here so this is how you can use the list uh, to effect when you want to get the values from a drop down so this example is also done so let me comment it out and now let me show you all the next part that is how to use a set so we are going to launch application 2 here and for set we are going to use nokri.com so with nokri.com there are different there is a different concept which you have to understand first again for that i'll be creating a separate video but just to give you an insight so if you look at this nokri.com website this is the home page and it has got three child windows here there is a gen packed there is cognizant window and there is a zorient window which are like advertisements window available on the website now what happens is that when the website gets launched these three pop up windows also get launched at the same time right so we might have a scenario in our automation framework or from a company perspective for any specific application i'm just taking nokri website as an example we might have a example we might have a scenario that you have to first reach out to the child window maybe do some action on it then close the window and then come back to the parent window which is this home page window nokri.com so how are we going to do that particular scenario that will be a kind of a interesting scenario right so for that we have to use a concept of windows handling in selenium so i'll go back to that method and explain it so this is a set usage method how are we going to use set in selenium so for that you have to use the concept of window handle so window handle means that if i say driver dot window get window handle so whatever is the current window it will consider that as my parent window and it will just give me the parent window handle so i'm going to store it in a string variable so window handle means it's like a unique window identifier and it is stored in it's basically like alpha numeric or it could be some string variable value so i'm going to store it in a string variable parent window handle right now what you have to do you can print it it's just for the sake of uh, getting or seeing what is the value i'm just printing it here now what about the child windows so okay it has gone and it has given me this particular window handle that is job recruitment job search this particular window handle what about these child windows right it has to get those window handles as well so that whenever i require to i can go to these individual windows and do some operation on it so for that purpose we are having a method in selenium web driver called get window handles it is not handle here it is get window handles so of course it is more than one as the name suggest handles it's a plural form so it's going to store it in a set of string it itself is indicating what you have to do it's such uh, is a case of eclipse that it is when you do a mouse over it will give you a suggestion as to what you have to do so it is going to return you a set of string so that is why i am creating a set of string here because all of these individual windows are having unique window identifier so i am going to store it into a set of string because all of them are going to be a string value so set of string i'm saying child window handles right so this is the syntax to do it now what we have to do we have stored it into a set again a set is another collection type so just to give you an overview set will store only unique values it cannot have duplicate elements again i'll be creating a separate session in detail about set in my java tutorials playlist so you can look at that once i create the video but for now just think that it is going to have a unique value within it and we have to use some kind of a iterating mechanism to iterate over the set so we have used here child window handles and if i just show you the dot operator it is going to have all these methods so i'm going to use the iterator method now right so i'm going to use the iterator method it is going to return me what it is going to return me iterator of string so i'm going to store it into a iterator of string and store it into itr variable so again similar method like what we have seen earlier even for set we are having has next method iterate over it get the next value this is the next value get the next value so here in our case it's going to be next window because we are going to 
get iterating over the different windows here. Remember, this is an iterator of different windows. It's a set of, it's a collection of different pop-up windows. So we are having totally four windows here. One, two, three, four. That is three pop-up window and one main parent window. So totally we are having four windows here. It is going to iterate it over inside this loop while itr.has has next. So once it comes inside, it's going to get the first window. It could be parent window or it could be a child window. I'm not sure. So that is why we are storing it into a child window using itr.next. We are just printing it. What is the window handle? Whatever you have got here is nothing but the window handle. And now I have put an if condition that I'm going to check whether my parent window and child window are the same or not. So what I want to do, if it is not the same, I want to go to that child window, like here it is gen packed, print the title and just close this window. That is the operation I want to do. So I've put a condition that if parent window handle dot equals child window, but I've put a not in front of it. If it is not same, then we have to use one particular method in web driver called switch to. So it goes like this. You have to use driver dot switch to. You can switch to a frame, you can switch to a window, you can switch to alert. There are different ways of switching to how it can be used. But I'm using switch to to the effect of switching to a window. So I'm going to say dot window. And if you see here, it's a string, nothing but the window handle. So that is how you're going to use it to switch to a particular window. That is the child window in this scenario. So I'm going to switch it to this child window. And just going to print the current driver dot get title. So it will be allowing me to print the title of my child window. As simple as that. If in case a parent window handle is not equal to child window. Clear? Else, if it is same, then in that scenario, we are going to just say the parent window title will print it. Because you're going to say this is parent window. We are going to print its title using driver dot get title. Right? Now, once it has done all of this iteration, right? So what is happening here? Let's just understand. This is going inside a loop. Right. So what you could do here is that we could print this, put the statement outside this current loop. So let it go one by one inside with all the different uh, child windows. And once I'm done with all of them, I can basically switch to my parent window. So I'm just saying switch to default content and I can just window title and just I can print it. So this is the example I'm just trying to use to show you all how we can switch to the window and how we can just lead to the uh, operations with respect to that. So we are storing it into a set collection, iterating over the set and then switching over to the child window respectively and then closing it out whenever we want to. So here I was closing it out. So I'll just uncomment it, driver.close. So let's run this program and I'm going to use only this particular part. So it's going to launch the window and application .com. So pop-ups are launched as well. Maximize it. And now it's going to switch to one by one all the windows and then close it. And then finally close the knockly.com. Okay, let's look at what is the output. So it got failed. Let's have a look why it got failed. Yeah, but it has done whatever action we wanted it to do that it has printed the parent window handle that is ending with C ACB. If you see the first child window handle, it was exactly the same. So it did not switch to that because we have put the if condition that if it is the same, do not switch to it. See, if it is the same, do not switch to it. So that is why it will not go inside it when it sees it's the same. It has gone and just printed the parent window handle here, right? So if you see here, this is parent window. It's title is because it went into the else loop for the first time. Later after that, for each and every child window, it has gone and printed the handle and the title, Zorient, Cognizant, Genpact, right? And after that, okay, now let's see why we got this error. No such window exception, target window already closed. So let's see what particular line number we're getting this error. So just come down. Set usage 94 and for main 135. So let's go to 94 here. So that means at this particular line, we're getting the error. So it's not existing, it says. So we have to put this here to go back to its parent window. 
and now let's see run the program So let's look at what happened here. Exception, no such window, target window already closed. So it's giving some error here. Let's just look at why it's giving the error. So the reason we were getting this error is because we were basically not able to, it was not able to get the window and it was saying a message that it, the window is already closed. So what I've done is that I've just put the window handle of the parent window. See, once I've done with all of my operations here that is switching to the child window printing the title and closing the individual pop-up i have to again come back to my parent window so with the default content it was not able to come back so i have just allowed it to switch to the window here of parent window handle which we have already stored above so after this while loop is over i have switched it to the parent window handle and then i'm printing the title here so let's run this program Okay, so it has done with the operation. Now let's look at the output. So it has gone one by one. It has gone and printed the parent window handle. Initially, child window handle is the same. So it has printed that. It went into the else loop here that this is parent window. Its title is and it has printed the title. It has gone one by one now inside the child windows and it has printed the window handle as well as the title. And then finally, once the while loop is done, it is going to switch back to my window of parent window and just going to get the title printed that is it and then finally we are even closing the window if you see quit driver it is going to close the window so that is why if you see the operation is terminated so there is one particular thing left since it's become a very long session i don't want you all to be confused that i'll be showing in my next part that is how to use use hash map in my selenium so if you look at this particular part which i had commented out so this is the portion we are going to see in our next session, the hash map. So we have seen how to use list for finding the drop down values of elements or how to basically store different rows of elements and you've seen set how to store the window handle and then iterate over it. So hope you found the session useful. So please do share with your friends and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you so much.